Poland is set to construct one of Europe's most expansive transport hubs, integrating high-speed trains and air travel. This ambitious project has garnered attention from NATO, aimed at bolstering security in the region's eastern flank. Yet, amidst the excitement, there's a caveat. Warsaw's existing two airports face replacement plans, stirring up controversy. The new government appears to strongly oppose the project. So, what's driving this massive undertaking? Is it a genuine necessity for Poland, or merely a grandiose gesture? Situated 40 kilometers west of Warsaw, the Solidarity Transport Hub aims to seamlessly integrate air, rail, and road transportation. Bolstered by the addition of 2,000 kilometers of high-speed railway lines linking the capital to key Polish cities and rail Baltica. By 2035, the Solidarity Transport Hub aims to accommodate over 40 million passengers annually, roughly half the capacity of London Heathrow. This ambitious endeavor positions Poland as a key transport hub for Central and Eastern Europe. Interestingly, the concept of the airport isn't new, dating back to the 1970s. Since 2000, the government has conducted various analyses, reports, and feasibility studies, culminating in the 2010 decision affirming Warsaw's need for a new airport. This imperative arises from the near-maximum capacity of Chopin Airport, Poland's largest thus far, to adequately serve present and future air transport demands. The government faces limited options to extend the lifespan of Chopin Airport. Originally situated far from the capital, urban growth has enveloped it, leaving little room for expansion. In 2019, this venerable airport, operational since the 1930s, served nearly 19 million passengers, nearing its maximum capacity of 22 million annually. With the gradual recovery of post-pandemic air traffic, projections indicate that the airport will hit its capacity ceiling within the next three years. Establishing a new airport emerges as the primary solution. Enter the Solidarity Transport Hub, alternatively known as the Central Communication Port. Far more than just an airport, the CPK intends to accommodate 30 million passengers by 2028 and 40 million annually by 2035. It aspires to be a pivotal element of Poland's transportation infrastructure facilitating not only air travel but also land-based transportation. The Solidarity Transport Hub will ensure that all major cities are seamlessly connected, with travel times of no more than two and one two hours via high-speed trains. This ambitious plan entails the development of 10 rail spokes emanating from the hub, complemented by two additional lines extending to cities previously lacking rail connectivity. To accomplish this, Nearly 2,000 kilometers of new high-speed railway lines must be constructed. However, once completed, accessibility to every corner of Poland will be greatly enhanced. The significance of the Solidarity Transport Hub extends beyond domestic accessibility. It holds considerable importance for international traffic as well. Picture this. Travelers from Hungary, Czechia, or Slovakia can hop on a high-speed train to Warsaw, arrive at the hub, and seamlessly transition to air travel to any destination, all in one centralized location. Yet, beyond its economic and infrastructural advantages, the CPK offers something less conspicuous but equally vital, defense capabilities. In light of lessons drawn from the conflict in Ukraine, Poland recognizes the necessity for a high-capacity airport capable of round-the-clock operations, adept in handling cargo, and seamlessly integrated with railway and road networks. NATO representatives have underscored the critical role of the CPK in fortifying the alliance's eastern flank. Consequently, the hub has been strategically designed as dual-use infrastructure, functioning as a civilian airport during peacetime and seamlessly transitioning into a military installation capable of supporting NATO's rapid response forces in times of conflict. The geopolitical landscape in Eastern Europe, underscored by the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, significantly underscores the importance of the project, anchoring it firmly on the table for further consideration and development. The CPK holds the potential to extend the Baltic Black Sea Line, possibly incorporating a high-speed link between Warsaw and Ukraine. Now, let's delve into the design aspect of this ambitious endeavor. Remarkably, this mega-project has garnered interest from industry giants. Renowned firms such as Grimshaw, Chapman Taylor, Zaha Hadid Architects, Benoit, and Pascal and Watson have each submitted their distinctive concepts for the project, showcasing a diverse array of approaches and innovations. The terminal building design proposed by Chapman Taylor showcased a monumental transparent dome symbolizing unity and reflecting Poland's national identity. 
spanning six floors, each representing distinct Polish landscapes. The design prioritized functionality over extravagance, aiming to minimize transfer times and walking distances for passengers. Meanwhile, Zaha Hadid Architects presented three designs, emphasizing the integration of the airport with the railway station and incorporating abundant natural light and greenery. However, none of their designs emerged victorious. Instead, the CPK administration favored a design crafted by renowned British architect Sir Norman Foster. Under a 150 million euro contract, Foster Studio has already finalized the comprehensive design concept. The design approach is a blend of tradition and futurism, aiming for a seamless integration of the airport terminal, railway station, and public transport interchange. Strategically situated in close proximity to each other, they converge into a central point, a spacious interchange plaza flooded with natural light streaming in from the nearby Campinos forest. The interior spaces will be lushly adorned with trees and greenery, fostering a calming environment to alleviate stress. Given the rapid pace of technological advancement, designers have proactively engineered the airport to be modular, capable of adapting to evolving operational demands. The main terminal, shaped like a key, will be constructed initially, while the secondary X-shaped terminal will be added later, as the need arises. However, detailed information about the key-shaped main terminal is scant, while numerous renderings of the X-shaped terminal abound, suggesting a potential shift in the construction sequence. Nevertheless, both terminals will be interconnected, potentially facilitated by a shuttle train system. There are even plans for a vertiport, where unmanned aerial vehicles could potentially operate from the airport in the future. Now, what are your thoughts on CPK? Does Poland truly require the construction of one of Europe's largest airports? And is it likely to come to fruition? Share your opinions in the comments below. We trust you found this episode of Bill Bright engaging. And as always, thank you for tuning in.